Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Gardner, Associate Professor of Music Education at the Pennsylvania State University. I'd like to talk to you about prioritization in instrumental ensemble rehearsals. Uh, instrumental music directors must choose the topics of focus when they're leading rehearsals um, of bands and orchestras uh, in the schools, particularly at the secondary level. Uh, often these decisions have to be made on the podium, on the spot, in reaction to the performance of the students. Um, having a deep understanding of your curriculum can help uh, guide your decision making as you're leading rehearsals, of course, uh, but also being flexible enough to react to things that are happening in the performance and uh, diagnose the problems and deal with them in the rehearsal is also an important skill. Having a prioritization system can help directors make pedagogical decisions, uh, both in creating lesson plans for the rehearsal and also reacting to the performance while rehearsal is going on. Uh, I'm going to suggest a five-level prioritization system uh, of how to approach rehearsals in general. Um, this is not to imply that any one of the topics is more important, but uh, just a way to organize the topics that you should address when you're in the middle of a rehearsal. Uh, inexperienced teachers in particular often are overwhelmed by the information coming at them in the middle of a rehearsal and will often go to the easiest things to teach rather than have some kind of system for which topics to address. So the system I will suggest will give a framework for that. Um, the five aspects uh, of the musical performance that are in the prioritization in order are one, sound production or tone quality, number two, rhythmic issues, number three, tonal issues, number four, style and expression, and five, uh, information about the music. Um, so the prioritization lists sound production is the first place to go, information about the music in the is the last place to go, but again that is flexible depending on where you are in the cycle, which I'll address later. The first level of prioritization is sound production. I'm talking about the quality of sound that the students produce with the instruments, uh, often known as tone quality. Um, this uh, topic overrides all other topics because if the tone quality of the uh, instrument sound is poor, none of the other topics really matter. So therefore, uh, it's always good for directors to keep the sound production in mind, the quality of the sound production throughout all rehearsals at all times and address it when necessary. The second level of prioritization is rhythm issues. Uh, now, one could argue between rhythm issues at the second level and tonal issues at the third level that those two are uh, kind of, of equal weight and are interchangeable, and that's somewhat true. However, I list rhythm issues slightly higher because I've often found that fixing rhythm issues can fix other issues as well, including tonal issues. Um, rhythm, uh, as I'm using the term, is a broad term and includes many aspects, actually. Some of those aspects include pulse and tempo. In other words, teaching students to feel the underlying pulse and to teach an entire group of students to feel it as an ensemble so they can play together. Um, another important concept is meter within rhythm issues. Uh, many directors ignore the concept of meter and do not teach students to play uh, beats uh, differentiated so it has the proper meter feel. So in other words, not just playing every beat the same, but giving emphasis on certain beats so it has the proper rhythmic feel. And lastly, uh, the issue of rhythmic accuracy. This deals with being able to recognize written rhythms and produce them accurately. Uh, but that has to happen within the context of pulse and meter as well. Now, tonal accuracy is differentiated from a different aspect, which is intonation. Intonation, of course, is, is are the pitches being played in tune? Are they in tune with the key and the other instruments in the ensemble? This aspect is especially important on stringed instruments uh, that do not have buttons or frets. Uh, where the finger placement helps determine the intonation. Uh, intonation is separate from uh, tonal accuracy because uh, the students um, may know the pitch and may know the fingering to use, but they may not place it in the correct place. Uh, very important to know that students need to be able to hear the pitch in their inner ear if they are to play with accurate intonation. So many exercises focused on allowing students to hear or sing a series of pitches and intervals will go a long way to helping them uh, perform with accurate intonation. The fourth level of prioritization is style and expression. Um, this is a very broad topic in the way I'm using it and includes many other aspects of the music. Uh, these aspects can include articulation, style, 
dynamics, balance, and phrasing. Uh, articulation, of course, being how are the uh, pitches initiated on the instrument and what type of sound is being created, including staccato, legato, or marcato. Uh, style has to do with the type of piece that it is and the lengths of the notes performed uh, related to the performance practice of that style. Dynamics, of course, uh, is a place that inexperienced teachers often go because it's an easy thing to teach. But one could argue that dynamics can always be taught simply through the conducting gesture and not through verbal instruction. Balance is another issue that uh, directors often uh, ignore but can be very powerful to helping your students perform well as an ensemble. Balance is the idea of uh, do the students know where the primary melody is within uh, the piece and are they balancing each of their individual parts accordingly. In other words, the entire ensemble can be marked with a forte marking, but every person's forte is a little bit different depending on what role they're playing in the music. So that's important to teach as well. And I've often found that teaching balance will help other things come into line. Phrasing is another issue, deciding the lengths of the phrases and what dynamic shape they should have can go a long way to improving the uh, expression aspect of their performance. Even though style and expression is lower in the prioritization, this should not imply that you shouldn't be working on these issues all the time, no matter where you are in the rehearsal cycle. It just means there are other things that uh, are a little bit higher prioritization when making decisions on the spot. The last category of prioritization is information about the music. Um, aesthetic information or cultural or uh, historical information about the music can be really helpful for a more expressive performance from your students. Um, these uh, topics could include uh, the composer's intent uh, for the piece when it was originally written, uh, the era uh, of composition uh, when the piece was written, uh, the type of ensemble it was originally written for, or the setting it was originally supposed to be performed, and what other settings have been used since then. Uh, the connection of the piece to the composer's other pieces, or to pieces by other composers. Uh, can be very instructive to give more context of how the pieces should be performed. And connection to our overall culture and other art forms can be also informative. Uh, for example, impressionistic music and making al uh, allegory to impressionistic uh, visual art can be very powerful. So, some things to um, keep in mind when considering this five-level prioritization. Um, Prioritizing things in this way can encourage a more balanced curricular approach to your teaching. In other words, uh, you can avoid addressing the same issues over and over again while ignoring other issues completely and have a much more uh, balanced approach to what you're teaching. Um, uh, keep in mind though that prioritization is not static. In other words, it should change over time as you're going through a rehearsal cycle. For example, early in the cycle you may focus on the higher levels of sound production uh, rhythm and tonal issues. Uh, you may focus on those more early in the rehearsal cycle when the students are first learning the music. But as they get more familiar with the rhythms and pitches, then you can focus more on the other levels of style and expression and information about the music. So you should be dealing with all uh, issues within all five levels, but the amount that you do may change over the time of the rehearsal cycle. Observant and responsive decision-making creates productive and engaging rehearsals that your students will enjoy and it will lead them to wonderful performances uh, at the end of their goals. Thank you.